All right, the way substitution is going to work, looking at this uh, first system that I'm given over here, the way substitution works is you pick a variable within one of the equations that's given, any variable you want, and you solve for that variable. Now, with certain problems, it's going to make more sense to solve for one variable versus another. As you can see on this problem, y in this first equation is already solved for. So since that's already solved for, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what y equals right here, and I'm going to take that value for y or that expression for y, and I'm going to plug it in to the second equation in the place of y. So take one equation, solve for a variable, whatever you get, plug that expression into the other equation for that variable that you solve for. That's what we're doing here with the substitution technique. So when I plug in, I've got x minus 2 times y, which is 2 thirds x. That's the expression that replaces y. That's going to equal negative 2. If you're doing this correctly, you set up an equation that you can solve that just has one variable in it. So as I go through and solve this, you've got x. All right, this is 2 over 1, so that's going to be minus 4 thirds x equals negative 2. You know, how we proceed from here, if you guys want to clear the fraction, we can. If we don't like that denominator of 3, let's multiply everything by 3. If I do that, I've got 3x minus 3 cancels here, leaving 4x equals multiplying 3 over here, I get negative 6. At which point, combine like terms, you've got negative x equals negative 6, or just x equals 6. But now this is where we go back to our understanding of these systems of equations being able to be connected to graphs of lines, right? What's our solution to a system? It's going to be an ordered pair. So we've got half that ordered pair right now. We know the x coordinate is 6. So as I build my solution pair up here, I fill in 6, but now I've got to figure out what y is going to be. The nice thing about substitution is at some point when you got started, you solve for a variable. In this case, we didn't actually have to do that. Y was already solved for. So you can take what you got down here, you can go back to where you started, and you can simply plug in for that variable you solved for. So if I plug in 6, I'm plugging in 6 for x, y is going to equal 2 thirds of 6. So if this is over 1, that's going to be what? 12 over 3, right? So y is going to be 4. There's our ordered pair that represents the solution to this system using the substitution technique. All right, so now if we look at this other system, understanding we're going to solve this system using substitution. I mentioned when we started the last problem, you pick a variable within either of the equations, you solve for that variable. It doesn't matter which one. Some variables will make more sense to solve for than others. On this one, as I uh, look at what I have to work with, let's just change over, please. There we go. Looks like this first one, x, would be pretty easy to solve for, right? All I would have to do is add 5y over, and I've got what x is. So I took the first equation I solved for x. I got negative 3 plus 5y as an expression. I can take that, plug in for x to the other equation. When I plug into this second equation, I've got 7 times replacing x, negative 3 plus 5y, minus 9y equals negative 11. I mentioned this on the last problem as well. You know you're doing things correctly at this point. If you substitute it in, you only have one variable to solve for. So now we have one variable. That variable is y. If we solve, distribute the 7, get negative 21 plus 35y minus 9y equals negative 11. Combining like terms, at the same time I'm going to add 21 over. 35 minus 9, get 26y. 
adding uh, 21 over, we've got 10 over here. If you divide by 26, y is going to be, well, 1026, which reduces, it reduces to 5 thirteenths. So we're trying to build a solution pair here for our system. We now know what the y coordinate is. So setting up my solution pair, plug in 5 thirteenths for y. Now I've got to figure out what x is going to be. So if you go back to the initial step that you did, solving for x up here, you basically got a little formula you can follow to figure out what x is going to be, right? Now that I know y is 5 thirteenths, I'm just going to come back up here, plug in 5 thirteenths right there stuff a little space to work with. If I plug back in, let's see, we're going to have x equals negative 3 plus 5 times y, so 5 times 5 thirteenths. x is going to equal negative 3 plus this is 5 over 1, so if I multiply that out, that's 25 thirteenths. Need a common denominator here of 13. So negative 3, I have a common denominator of 13, that's going to be negative 39 over 13, right? Plus 25 thirteenths. If we add through here, negative 39 plus 25, you're going to get negative 14 over 13. So my x coordinate, negative 14 thirteenths. All right, given this system, if we're going to solve using substitution, it makes sense how we're going to substitute on this one. And you pick either equation you want, you solve for whatever variable seems to make sense to solve for. I mean, this one's already solved for y. So if that's already solved for y, take what y equals, this expression of 5 minus 4x, plug in for y to the second equation. When you plug in, you've got x minus 2 times the expression replacing y, which is 5 minus 4x, equals 8. If I distribute the negative 2 through, I get x minus 10 plus 8x equals 8. Combine like terms, get 9x and add 10 over, get 18. So x is going to be 2. That one worked out a lot nicer. Setting up my solution, which is an ordered pair, x coordinate is 2 find the y coordinate, we simply go back to the beginning, go back to the point where we solve for our first variable, that variable being y, we plug in what we found for x to this expression that y equals, you got 5 minus 4 times 2, so 5 minus 8 points going to be 2, negative 3. Alright, if we're going to substitute this expression for x into the second equation here. We've got 4 times 5y plus 4 over 2. Subtract 9y, let that equal 10. We do have a fraction involved, however, it's not a big deal if I know I'm taking 4 and multiplying. Right, because if I'm taking 4 and multiplying to this, this 2 goes into 4 2 times. Meaning, I will take this 2 now, and I will distribute that through to the 5y plus 4 that remains. If you distribute 2 through, you get 10y plus 8 minus 9y equals 10, at which point this works real nice. Because if you put your y's together, you've got y. And if you subtract your 8 over, 
you've got y equals 2. So building that solution, ordered pair, y coordinate is 2. Plugging back in to figure out x, go back to the beginning there. You're plugging in y as 2, so 5 times 2, 10, plus 4, 14, divided by 2, get 7. How the elimination process works. You're given a system, just like we have on the previous problems. The important thing about using this process is everything needs to be lined up. All the like terms need to be lined up. So normally you're going to see these problems presented in a standard form. It doesn't have to be, it's just that's normally the case. So you can see how on this system, you've got all your x's in a line here, you've got all your y's in a line, equal sign in a line, constant values over here. Using the elimination method, we're, well, we're trying to do just that. We're trying to eliminate something. Mm -hmm. So we, we choose a variable, doesn't matter which one, and we try to get rid of it. Normally, patterns you look for as you're looking at the like terms, uh, you look for patterns where maybe the signs are opposite. Like if I look at the y's, notice how I've got a negative down here, a positive up here. A way I could maybe get rid of the y's is I could take this top equation I could multiply by 2. If I multiply by 2 all the way through, I'd have 8x plus 2y equals 10. And on the bottom equation, I'm just going to leave that as is, x minus 2y equals 8. And I do that because now if you look at the y's, if I were to add through like term by like term, those y's would cancel out. I would have eliminated them. So adding through, y's will be gone. Got 8x and 1x, so 9x. That equals 18 over here. x is going to be 2. Same goal in mind. If you're trying to build an ordered pair as a solution, we've got the x coordinate. x coordinate is 2. Now, to figure out what y is, this is not as convenient as substitution was. Because with substitution, we knew we could go back to the very beginning where we had a variable solve for. Here, you just have to make a decision. Pick one of these equations to work with, plug in 2 for x, and solve for y. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to take this first equation. That one won't be too hard to solve for y, right? I'm going to plug 2 into that. If I plug 2 in, I've got 4 times 2 plus y equals 5. Of course, this is going to be 8, so subtract 8 over. Y is going to be negative 3. So there's your Y coordinate. Don't make me yell. You're going to solve using elimination on this one. Well, let's see here. I would recommend maybe clearing fractions to start, then see what you have to work with. Like if I clear fractions to start, um, Clearing the 2 here, multiply everything by 2. If I multiply through by 2, cancels the fraction. I'm left with 1x uh, plus the 4y equals 24. Second equation, I'd multiply by 3 to clear that fraction. Multiply all the way through, get 9x minus 3 cancels here, 4 is left. So 4y, that equals 6. And hey, look at what we have there. It just happened to work out perfectly. All we were trying to do is clear fractions, and now that everything is lined up and ready to go, just so happens the y's disappear. You add through, y's cancel. And you're left with 10x equal to 30. Divide by 10, x is 3. Ordered pair, we know the x coordinate. Now, to figure out the y coordinate, we can go back to one of the original equations. Or since we tinkered with the original equations, which gave us these new ones, we could go back 
to one of these new ones and plug it. It does not matter. Because we know what we did over here was legal, right? We multiplied through, we multiplied both sides, everything still bounced, so all the relationships remain the same. We could plug in, say, to this first equation, this first new equation, and solve for y. It doesn't matter. So if I do plug into that equation of x plus 4y equals 24, I'd have 3 plus 4y equals 24. Subtract 3 over. Got 21 now equal to 4y. Divide by 4. y is 21 fourths. All right, it's viewer's choice. Any method you like. Let's stick with the uh, current two that we're trying to get familiar with to meet our goal for today, which is elimination or substitution. I choose elimination. How about you guys? Yeah. I'm liking the elimination on this one, right? Say I want to get rid of the x's. Trying to create some uh, opposite coefficients here on the x terms. Everything's lined up and ready to go. I could multiply this top equation by 2, right? If I multiply all the way through by 2, I get negative 6x plus 10y equals negative 12. There's the adjustment I'm making on the top one. On the bottom one, that's 6x minus 10y equals 12. Feeling chaotic. All right. If I use elimination here, try and eliminate the X's. Good job by me. Accomplish that goal. But whoops, there went the Y's. Oh, no. And whoops, there go 12's. What's left? Zero equals zero. Is that true that zero equals zero? Yes, that is true. So whenever you get this kind of situation, do you know what the answer is? Zero. It's the same line, right? We go back to what we understand about graphing. Technically, what we have over here, these are the same lines. So we have infinitely many solutions. always go back to what we understand about the graphs to make sense of our answers.